Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Briar Hengdahl Windwalker. I was given homework for this week's talk. It remains to be seen whether I'm being graded on it or not. I'm sure I will find out one way or another. We have a uh, gatha on giving thanks, which is not something that's always part of our weekly practice anymore, uh, but it is something that I'm fond of and something that uh, I use in some of my own daily practice. Infinite realms of light and dark convey the Buddha mind. Birds and trees and stars and we ourselves come forth in perfect harmony. We practice and recite this for all beings in grateful thanks to our many guides along the way. So, um, Master Saisetsu at one point needed to expand his school. He needed larger quarters, room for instruction and training, and he let it be known in the community that he needed donations to, to expand his school, to continue teaching the Dharma. And a local businessman, Umetsu, stepped forward and he came to the master to donate and he handed him a bag and he said, here are 500 real, which are a, a gold coin. And I said, through was just there you know, picking it went in his robe and he looked up and saw Mezu and drug. All right, I will take it. Took the bag, set it down went back to picking at whatever was bothering him on his robe. Umezu was kind of dissatisfied with this attitude. And um, Master, in that stack are 500 real. The Master said, yes, you told me that before. Umezu's kind of taken aback. He says, See, even if I am a wealthy merchant, 500 is, is a lot of money. And the master said, and do you want me to thank you for it? Umetsu said, well, you ought to. Saisetsu said, why should I? The giver should be thankful. And went back to whatever was bothering him on the robe. Now, if you hear enough of these uh, these kind of Zen stories, you, you get the distinct idea that a lot of the old masters are kind of jerks. And so when, when you're talking about this in Saisetsu and the donation, uh, at least to me, what comes up next to mind is Bodhidharma and you know, after the emperor has explained everything that he's given and donated and done and said, what's all this worth? Bodhidharma says nothing at all, no merit. So if I, if I kind of flip flop these two, then it's probably reasonable to ask why the giver should be thankful because Bodhidharma has been clear that, yeah, there's no merit. So I don't know if the emperor should have been thankful for, for what he gave. And it, it, it kind of circles around. You'll notice that's a, a repetitive pattern in Zen. So if the giver should be thankful, but maybe isn't, maybe doesn't have anything to be thankful for, and the master's not thankful, even though he maybe should be thankful because he got what he wanted, well, where does all this Thanksgiving come in? Is it pointless? Is it non-Buddhist to be thankful or grateful or, well, no, actually it's part of just about every ceremony. It's part of every seating. So where do we get that? Certainly not from the stories, I guess. 
So I'll give you part of the Katanu Sutta. And Buddha says, now, what is the level of a person of no integrity? A person of no integrity is ungrateful and unthankful. This ingratitude, this lack of thankfulness is advocated by rude people. It is entirely on the level of people of no integrity. A person of integrity is grateful and thankful. This gratitude, this thankfulness is advocated by civil people. It is entirely on the level of people of integrity. Does that mean the master is not civil? Bodhidharma is not civil? Are they unthankful? Are they teaching lessons? Did they not have enough tea that day? The way that we express gratitude and thankfulness in the Dharma is a way of being worthy of everything, of every moment, of every offering, every bit of food in a bowl and an alms round, every stick of incense, every teaching, every moment, every in-breath and out-breath. To acknowledge these things is to be thankful, but more than that, to live them. In Dogen's teachings in the Shobogenzo, in the second chapter on continuous practice, he said, continuous practice day after day is the most appropriate way of expressing gratitude. So beyond just saying thank you, which may and many times be a civil expression, but depending on how heartfelt it is, almost meaningless in average daily discourse. What we do with what we're given is how we express our thankfulness. That doesn't mean the master couldn't have said thank you for the 500 Ryu, dude. Really appreciate it. Going to build a school, put a scroll with your name on it over the door. But what we do with these gifts, after we've said thank you, after we've said the gatha, after we've bowed or done a, a, a gasho, is how we truly express gratitude. And that's something beyond words, just as the teaching is beyond words. So how do we express gratitude for the person that sits us down and shows us how to meditate? We sit down and meditate. And then we teach someone else who comes to us how to sit down and meditate. How do we express gratitude for the Dharma? Incomparable as it is being shared with us, we continue to share it. How do we express gratitude for the food that we eat that many of us will eat far too much of tomorrow? We take it to our bodies to nourish ourselves and go forth using the energy that food produces and burn ourselves until like a stick of incense, we've used up all the fuel and we've produced smoke and dharma and done it all completely. So beyond the words, beyond the thank you, beyond the handshake, beyond acknowledging that somebody has given you something how do you truly express gratitude and thanks by living forward in each moment in each breath what has been shared with you and that's why the final lines of that gatha are we practice and recite this for all beings in grateful thanks to our many guides along the way we thank our guides we thank those who donate to us. We thank those who feed us. We thank the world of all the birds and the trees and the animals and the beings by practicing and reciting the way of the profound Dharma.
Thank you.